Why are some popular artists completely re-recording some of their previous albums just to be able to release them on vinyl? It's not just Taylor Swift and her new versions. It's all kinds of artists across hip hop, rock, indie, pop punk, the list goes on. We will discuss on this episode, talking about records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent record shops in the Dallas, Fort Worth area. If you're local, feel free to visit one of our Metroplex locations. If you're not local but you're in the U.S., you can shop online anytime at ntxvinyl.com for new pre-order and reissue vinyl records. And of course, would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and follow us across social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at NTX Vinyl is the handle. So let's talk about why artists these days, not all artists, but uh, some artists are choosing or being forced to actually re-record some of their previous albums. Uh, it's a topic that um, has come up a lot more recently and that is because of Taylor Swift and the uh, new versions that she's putting out of her older recordings, right? But she's not the only one. Um, did a quick search and my team did some research and we found a whole list of artists across all different genres that have had to, and I'll explain what that means, have had to re-record these albums. Bands like Everclear, Thrice, Switchfoot, Bowling for Soup, Phantom Planet, LA Guns, DMX. It's a pretty long list and I'm sure we could find a lot more. It's a simple reason why they're doing this. Um, the fact of the matter is, um, is they don't own their music. And so if they want to press it on vinyl because it only originally usually came out on CD, maybe streaming, maybe digital, now they want to press it on vinyl and they don't have the capability to do that on their own. Now, most of these artists, they're no longer under contract with these specific labels, but the labels contracted them many years ago and own those master recordings. So the artist really only has two options. They can go back to that label if it still exists. If it doesn't exist, they have to find out who absorbed it who it was sold to because their masters were sold to another company. And a lot of times it's not just sold one time, it's sold multiple times. A lot of these labels get kind of gobbled up in umbrella deals. And now there's, you know, the big labels like Universal, Sony, uh, Warner, those types of labels, they own tons and tons of masters from scooping up these little labels over the course of many years. So a lot of times uh, the first option for artists to is to go, uh, you know, get in touch with the old label and cut a new deal with them, right? Well, that's not even possible sometimes. They don't even know where to start. They don't even know where the masters reside in some cases. And then in other cases, maybe they do and they figure out who owns it, where they are, maybe physically, maybe digitally, either way. And the cost is just ridiculous. These labels are sitting on all of these master recordings and they don't ever intend to press them to vinyl because there's not a lot of money there. You know, maybe we're talking about an artist it's got an album that came out 20 years ago and uh, there's not a lot of demand for it. You know, there's enough demand for maybe a couple hundred copies, maybe even a couple thousand copies. But the reality is that's not enough money to warrant the label digging into their archives, getting lawyers involved, cutting a new contract, charging the artist, um, you know, a licensing fee, going through the whole spiel again just to make a few thousand bucks off of a limited edition pressing. It's just not worth it for that label. They've got a lot bigger fish to fry if they're still in business or um, you know, whoever the, uh, the larger label is that now owns them really doesn't have any interest in doing that type of thing unless it's gonna make them a lot of money, right? So the artist ends up going, well, all right, uh, if I actually found who owns these masters, they don't wanna give me the time of day or they do give me the time of day and they tell me it's gonna cost a crazy amount of money. That's the other thing labels are doing is they're saying, yeah, we'll give you the rights to press, you know, a thousand copies of this on vinyl so you can sell it to your fans. We're going to charge you 25 grand up front as a licensing fee. And the artist is like, well, you know, 
we weren't necessarily in it to get rich. We just wanted to do something cool for our fans or maybe have, you know, a physical product to sell on tour. But if you're going to charge us a whole bunch of crazy money and we're going to go into debt to have to do it, then that's not obviously going to be an option. So the artist has their hands tied because they can't regain control of the mat. If they can find where the masters are, then they can't regain control because they can't afford it. So what options, what is the second option? The second option is to go re-record the entire album. It sounds crazy, but again, this is the same thing Taylor Swift is going through and why she, why she is uh, re-releasing Taylor's versions, which are completely net new recordings. She's always owned the publishing, but as far as the masters, in her case, she signed a really bad contract when she was a, a teenager. And a lot of these other artists, it's not necessarily that they were bad contracts, it's just that the contract didn't include anything in regards to releasing on vinyl, and they no longer own the rights to be able to do so. So in Taylor's case, again, there's bad, bad blood there. But for most artists, it wasn't like the labels were out to screw them originally. It's just now the labels have no motivation to get involved in this. And um, that's when artists, like a lot of the ones I named, say, all right, screw it. Let's go back into the studio. A lot of these artists have their own studios or can get it done because they've been in the industry a long time and they can record an album for, you know, less than 25 grand, especially because they know these songs. They've been playing their whole lives. They can go back and, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to say change them, but they can be true to the original form and maybe update them a little bit if they want and release a new, a net new record of new recordings of the same old songs. A lot of artists are calling it like, you know, updated version or a fresh take. Um, um, Everclear, in their case, they did a greatest hits. They went and re-recorded a lot of their most popular songs and put them on a greatest hits. Again, new version so they could retain the rights and own the masters. But the real question is, do the fans like this? Do the fans want this? Well, in Taylor Swift's case, I think yes, because it was such a public um, uh, battle between her and um, the dude who, who sold her label, bought her, her her rights when the label was sold. But a lot of her fans, I think, are are kind of rallying around her versions as a way to support her, which is totally cool. But that's a that's an anomaly. Most of these artists, the fan base is, you know, they don't really know why this is happening, and in a lot of cases, or some cases. The albums aren't presented in a way that even shows fans and tells fans that these are new versions, and that can be really frustrating. Again, the artist is in a really tough spot here. They just want to be able to produce a physical uh, product, physical piece of media. Most of the time these days, that's on vinyl. And they want to be able to, uh, you know, sell it at their shows, sell it online, maybe make a little profit off of it because there's not a lot of profit in streaming and uh, and, and that type of thing. So they're looking for a way to continue to make a living at this. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, their best albums that contain their best songs are completely unattainable. So, you know, their hands are forced and they're forced to go back into the studio and re-record these songs. Now, if I put my put myself in the shoes of that musician, I could see it two ways. I could see it as, man, this is such a beating. You know, why are we going back and recording these songs that we wrote and recorded 20 years ago and that people love? That's the thing. It's like, it's not that people don't like the old recordings. Nostalgia is huge. You know, part of the reason a lot of people, myself included, collect records is because of the nostalgia factor. And because when you listen to these versions of these songs, it takes you back to a time and place of when they came out and when you originally bought that album. You know, if they can, if the artist can go and replicate the the version exactly as it is well that's kind of cool and interesting but let's be honest it's been 10 20 30 years like people's voices change people's skill set change band members change you know and so there's a lot of variables that go into it and then you get into that scenario where should the artist try and replicate it exactly as it was when it came out or should they put a new twist on it will their fans appreciate that will their fans look down upon that Again, very tough spot for the artist to be in. They just want to sell their music. But unfortunately, they signed the rights away to it years ago. Those labels are long gone. 
or or don't care to get involved with it because there's a lot of not a lot of money not a lot of money to be made for that particular album artist, and uh, and so it creates this scenario that we're in now where I think it's going to start happening more and more and more. You're going to see artists going back recording their most popular albums again. It makes me think of Hollywood. Is what it makes me think of. It's for different reasons, but if you look at what Hollywood is, it's like they're just regenerating the same story over and over. You know, you saw Top Gun, now you see it again. You saw, you know, whatever Spider Man, now you see it again. They're going back to all of these old movies and shows and, uh, you know, stories essentially, and just rehashing them to play with our addiction to nostalgia. Some of them end up being great. Some of them end up being horrible for me personally i think it's just freaking lazy now again that's not the case with most artists they're not doing it because they're lazy and they just want to make a buck in most cases it's the matter of staying alive and giving the fans what they want you know some some of these albums have never been released on vinyl ever they only came on cd they only got to streaming you know so the only way to have a physical you know the cds aren't even made anymore those are out of print so the only way a physical copy can get into the hands of a fan is is on a record, and so that's what some of them are doing. Is uh, they're they're choosing to rehash and choosing to go back and re-record because their hands are tied. And I don't think it's I don't think it's the type of thing where they're looking to take advantage of fans at all. You know, I, I can I can put myself again in the shoes of that artist, and they'd much rather be working on new music. They'd much rather be going to the studio working on something that new or creative and being able to do what they do for a living current day versus going back and uh you know re-recording the songs of the past but um i think it'll continue to happen i think we're going to see it more and more i'd be curious to know you as someone who buys records who is a music fan um how you feel about this do you look down upon it do you kind of look at it and be like man why why even bother like what's the sentiment here from fans again taylor swift aside for mo any of these other artists who are doing these re-recordings. I'm sure some people enjoy it and they think, wow, it's a fresh take on it. But I'm sure others are like, man, don't mess with the way it was. I totally get it both ways. And I'd be curious to hear your point of view. So let me know in the comments. Appreciate the feedback as always. My name is G.I. Sanders and we'll be back again with another episode of Talking About Records soon.